Howdy, 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 all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to Stardew Valley. Tools aren't real and sleep isn't real edition. That's not a good what? name. We'll workshop it. I mean, all of our branding is already SV Terra, so we have to <laughs> stick with SV Terra. <laughs> sleep, very tough. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of the rest of the acronym. Prickly, look at this. We've just started a new save. We have a total of zero gold, actually. And we do have this beautiful farm, though. It is a beautiful farm. Yeah, new farm who dis. The 1.6 <laughs> update dropped a week ago, and we're playing it. This is, this is it. We started a new farm so we could see some of the 1.6 stuff. Now, I know what you're saying. What about that old farm that we loved so much? Don't even worry. We're going to keep playing that one. Um, today, this might be a one-off thing, or maybe we can make it a regular thing. It's up to you guys, um, but we'll definitely keep playing on our old save as well. Um, so yeah, we'll try this out today, see how we like it, and then either do it again or never do it again. Those, those are the options. And the options all the time. I just uh, incentive for doing it again. Pro argument. The name of this farm is Suffering Farm, and that's <laughs> a grand name. Very appealing. It is. the The name is very human. Um. All right, Jared. What are, What are our rules on this save? Why is the... it Suffering Farm? What's suffering about it? <laughs> well, no tools. No upgradable tools. We will still fish and we will still scythe. And we will, I think that's all. Yeah, that's all the tools that we can use because they're not upgradable. Mm -hmm. But, and that's, that, that's old rules. You guys do that. We, we've been doing that for a while. We have been breaking ground in our other save with that set of rules. But new to this save, we are not allowed to sleep. We will not be sleeping at all in this save which means that every night we are going to get mugged we're gonna lose stuff we're gonna, it's gonna be really bad and uh, it's gonna be really really hard and i am so excited for that because berkeley and i were talking about this tools make the game way too easy especially with two people one of whom knows what they're doing so <laughs> Now that we've kind of acclimatized to no tools, we just had to mix it up a little extra. Berkeley, I don't remember if we talked about this on stream, but this has been something we've both been excited for for a minute. So Yeah, we've joked about it frequently. Every time we talk about possible other challenges to do, no sleep has come up as a possible challenge. And now we're doing it. Now we are doing it. Loosely be based on my real life. <laughs> Speaking of, we both made characters that look a little bit like ourselves, but just like the sleepiest versions of ourselves. That's right. Where are you at? Do you want to strike a pose? Oh, yeah. Let me... Uh, I'm I'm down on the southwest side of the lake, but I'm coming up. Oh, look at this beautiful clearing. Look at that. Two sleepy boys that is, in our pajamas. That's right. And matching shoes somehow. Oh, yeah. For now, let me. Oh, I can't take off my shoes. Take off my pants. <laughs> I didn't know that was Honestly, possible. this is a pretty, this is a pretty good pajama look. Do people react differently if you run around with no shirt or pants? That's a good question. I think they do in uh, Zelda. They Are definitely do no, in Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom. Okay. Well. Maybe to make it even more suffering, I maybe this will be my permanent state. We'll see. Okay. So, yeah, that's those are the rules. The other piece of that, I think, and the reason I think this is because Berkeley told me this, so it's probably true. Um, if you are out, not on the farm, when the when the day ends and you get mugged or whatever happens to you. Um, the consequences are worse if you're out in the world instead of back on your farm. 
So the other rule is that we have to be together and we have to be off the farm when this happens. So this is a good spot. I think, yeah, maybe we'll do like in the torchlight over here. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, this dirt this is this is our home now, the dirt patch. <laughs> um This is where we don't sleep. This is where we keep working until we pass out. That's right. Berkeley, I'm just realizing something. We don't have any weapons. That's true. It took us a while to get weapons on our previous playthrough. And unlike our last farm, and the canon reason we're not sleeping, monsters can spawn on this farm after dark. So I think the sun just went down. Let's take a look and see what we're dealing with. We yeah, might be in a lot of trouble. Does damage. Welcome, Benjamin. Benjamin says started but no pants. We're in pajama <laughs> mode because we are we're sleepy farmers. That's that's the theme we're going with. No so, sleep uh, challenge activated. If you just joined, uh, Stardew Valley 1.6 dropped a week ago. So we're starting a new farm with new rules to Ooh. see what 1.6 is all about. Okay, you can do a little bit of damage with the scythe. Wow, it is so dark. I cannot see a thing. Don't go to sleep. Don't succumb to the darkness. Benjamin says no sleep till Brooklyn. Maybe we should not sleep until we're able to create a like Gale replica of Brooklyn on our farm. Oh. Which would be impossible since there's not very many building options. I'm so glad you added on our farm to that because I was going to say, if, if this is real life, I'm never sleeping at all. I don't have the artistic skills to make <laughs> a replica of Brooklyn. Man, these bats are strong when you're trying to kill them with a scythe. Yeah, I think the weapons we had on our on our main playthrough were doing like 40 damage per swing, and now we're doing like two or three. Yeah, I'm, I went from prismatic sword to this. That was pretty bad. Oh, another part of the uh, rules that we've set for ourselves. We are trying, or maybe this is more strategy, we're trying not to have money in our account because that's the main thing that you're going to lose a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So we just won't have it. And uh, man, it's, it's already midnight. Help wanted. Nothing is posted today. All right. Oh, there's uh new stuff on the calendar because of 1.6. There's two bookseller events. And a mystery event from spring 15 through 17. I do not know what that's about. That's the Ides of March where somebody in town will betray us. Mm. Or someone else. I mean, we're not the most Caesary people. Ooh, Mayor people Lewis will town. get stabbed in the back by someone else. Maybe Marnie. His 36 closest friends. <laughs> Okay, it's getting late. Should we go to our go to our pastel oh, yeah. spot? Has has this type of tree always glowed like that? Um, I don't think it's actually glowing. I think it's just a trick of the not light. Maybe okay. it's new. The moonlight reflecting off the leaves. Jared, I'm seeing some graphical glitches on my laptop where I'm watching the stream. Okay. Um, chat, are you seeing that? Does that look Kind of staticky. Oops. Yeah, let me let me know what you guys find out or think. Um, it looks normal on my end, so. Okay. Yeah, it could just be me on my old little computer. We made one. Benjamin's gold. not seeing anything weird. Okay. Okay. Whew. One gold from one fiber. Who did that? Probably me. All right. What what will the consequences be? Oh no. There's hay in a box. Oh, that was that was already there. Where do I 
I'll put that in the chest. Oh, I guess we have chickens. I'll give it to the chickens. <laughs> okay, I got a letter in the mail. It says, Berkeley, someone dropped you off at the clinic last night. You'd passed out from exhaustion. You've got to take better care of yourself and go to bed at a reasonable hour. No. <laughs> Since you have no money, I provided your medical care free of charge, Dr. Harvey. Thanks, Dr. Harvey. All right, let's Ooh, see. Bar but Barmas says lots of lag on their end. Interesting. Uh, okay. Morris has sent me a letter. Morris says, Dear Mr. Jared, Last night, a Joja team member found you incapacitated. A medical team was dispatched to bring you home safely. We're glad you're okay. Since you have no money, we're obligated by law to provide this service free of charge. Morris, Joja Customer Satisfaction Representative. Thanks, Morris, for being obligated by law. Okay, here's what's interesting. Morris's letter sounded meaner since he said we did this because we were obligated by law. Presumably, Dr. Harvey was also obligated by law, but he didn't mention that part. Does that make him better or worse than Joja Mart? I think better. Anything he can do to avoid reminding me of the tyrannical government that's fighting a wasteful war with Stardew Valley's neighbors um, is a good thing. All right. I, d did you get a letter from Willie? Because I did. Yeah, I did. I'm going to go try to get my fishing pole. Got my fishing pole. Oh, you're in my cutscene. That's wild. Are you going to comment on the fact that I'm not wearing a shirt or pants, Willie? Willie doesn't care. Look at his hat. <laughs> True. My fishing bar is so small. On my first ever playthrough, I didn't even realize that, uh, that the fishing bar got bigger until I started my second playthrough. And I was like, whoa, what is happening? I didn't realize it got bigger until just now when you said it did. Oh, yeah. Every time huh. you level up your fishing, your fishing bar gets bigger. Very interesting. Man, my guy looks super sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Sardine. Can you even catch a sard? I guess you can catch anything that's big enough to bite a hook, but... I'd be surprised if you could feel a sardine biting your line. I don't know how. I assume they, like, commercially will fish them with nets. Right. I don't know if you can do it recreationally. Wow. I am catching all types of different fish, and most of them are silver star. It's like a good first fishing day. Watch, this is going to be another sardine, but even smaller. Yeah, I was right. I just caught a one-inch <laughs> sardine. <laughs> All right, while we're here playing 1.6, um, I read through most of the 1.6 patch notes. I read 1.6 patch notes for about 20 minutes before I was like, I have to stop. This is too many patch notes. <laughs> just truly insane how much changes in a small update. Um, but... I wanted to bring up a few things that are going to have ramifications for us. So one of the things that changed is you um, you get less foraging XP for picking uh, crops from wild seeds, which has been our main source of foraging XP on our main playthrough. So that is a bit of a bummer. But good news is you now get foraging XP for harvesting the mushrooms from the Batcave. Oh, nice. Doing. So 
I think those two combined should at least cancel each other out and maybe even be a net win for us. Yeah. Especially because it's a lot easier to get mushrooms from the mushroom cave than it is to get all the wild seeds, I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, another change is that there are now a bunch of Jojo Mart options or Jojo Mart alternatives for Ginger Island things. So we've been saying on our main started playthrough for a while that we're going to get as close as we can to perfection, but we won't be able to finish it because there's parts of Ginger Island we can't do without tools. But if we're willing to do an evil playthrough, a Jojo Mart playthrough, uh, then I think... Well, I'll need to do more research, but I think we can go all the way. No tools, no sleep. If we go Jojo Mart. Which... So we're going to keep that as an option. It's pretty, pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. Do you say so yourself? I, I I do, actually. It's reminding me a lot of Goob from Meet the Robinsons, who is super sleep deprived and turns into an evil, like, <laughs> maniac, basically, because of it. Uh huh. So that's my reason for thinking that I'm in support of Jojo Mart this run. Another big difference, as we've already seen, is there's a new farm type. So um, I don't remember what we were doing on our previous playthrough. Probably just the standard farm. Um, yeah, I think so. But there's one that like helps you specialize in mining, and there's one that helps you specialize in fishing, and there's one that helps you specialize in foraging. Now there's one that lets you specialize in raising animals. So... Uh, that's the one that we went with. It started us off with a coop and two chickens. So we're going to have a much quicker start in getting our like animal production up and going than we had in our previous one. Um, which might mean that crops don't, and mining, those might not be profitable for us at all. We might just go like full animals. Full animal farm. I guess that would make it hard or impossible to get all the XP that we need if we want to go for perfection on this one, but that that's getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what the Jojo Mart requirements are too, I think. Um, well, I guess there's certain requirements that really don't change between the two. Yeah, I, I want to do more reading about the differences between two animal farm sounds sketchy <laughs> read 1984 that that's it, it's a classic i have never read it i don't think i've read nine or i don't think i've read animal farm i did read 1984 um i watched a movie adaptation of animal farm and i think as long as we uh don't have any pigs <laughs> or don't let the pigs in the house. I think that was the issue was letting the pigs in the house. That's maybe. because as long as we don't cross that one specific line. Yep. So, okay. One, oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask what else is new. Oh, in, in 1.6. Yeah. There's new festivals. Uh, I think maybe one major festival and two minor festivals and maybe some other events. Um, there are new dialogue options. There are portraits that you can buy of your spouse if you marry one of the NPCs. There are new outfits in wintertime. Whoa, I just caught a sea jelly. Whoa, that feels super rare to be getting on day two. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I've caught a sea jelly in our other safe. <laughs> All right, I gotta get rid of this stuff before night falls. Yeah, we are going to run out of space in the chest fast. So one strategy that we talked about, I can't remember if we already said it, but um, 
I think one strategy with the no sleeping rules is to try to not have any money, which means that we're going to hoard items instead of like hoarding money. But that's going to require a lot of chests. <laughs> so I don't know. And you need money to get chests. I guess we'll fill up our chest and then sell everything in it and then see where that gets us. Use that to buy Wood one for a more chest. chest. Yeah. Yeah. Which will then fill up to buy the third chest and on mm -hmm. and on and plans within plans within plans. <laughs> Whoa, I just saw like a a possum. I didn't know that Whoa. was a thing. Oh, okay. I think I remember that from patch notes. Yeah, new like, I don't know what to call those ambient creatures. <laughs> Yeah. Just for looking at creatures. I think ambient's a good word for that. Non foodable creatures. Oh, Berkeley, I can fish wood from this fountain. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, by the time we learned that on our previous playthrough, it like wasn't profitable anymore. But uh, that might be a great way to go this time. Now we have two wood. How much is it for a chest? Like probably 10? 50. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a lot more. Jared, you went on a business trip last week. Ah, uh, um, yeah. So that's why that I didn't go? stream last week. I went down to College Station, Texas, down to Texas A&M, and learned about how to be a good transmission planner, which is what my job is. Um, and it was pretty cool. Cool drive, cool state. Greener than where I live, ironically. Hmm. And... Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was kind of wild. So I live in a pretty small town. And when I made it to Texas, I flew into Dallas. And I rented my first car ever. Um, and drove through my first big city ever. And mm. I don't know if you would count Boise. I wouldn't count Boise. Um, no. But, yeah, that was crazy just to see that many people. It's been a while. And uh, on my way back from my trip, uh, my flight out of Dallas was leaving at 6 a.m. But it's a three-hour drive from where I was to the airport. So instead of driving at midnight to get there <laughs> in time to board my plane I decided to drive while I was still like fairly alert because um, there was a huge storm and I'm really glad I did um, it's it was wild driving back through the hardest rain I've ever seen I had my wipers on full and I just couldn't see it at all because of how much water was pouring down but but, but between that and water pooling on the freeways because it's super flat there and they don't build their roads for drainage. Um, I was pretty like pumped on adrenaline. So falling asleep wasn't an issue. Oop. But here we go. I, I passed out. Here we go falling asleep. Here we go. Benjamin says Boise is huge and Texas rain is no joke. Oh, I forgot. You've lived in both of those places, Benjamin. Um, Babarma, apparently Orwell wrote Animal Farm about the Russian Revolution and class warfare. 1984 is about the dangers of government with total control, but sounds like Mayor Lewis's jam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mayor Lewis is, is the Stalin to our characters, Trotsky. There we go. 
Level one fishing, let's go. All right, what'd they steal? Seemingly nothing, okay. Linus found me, who found you? <laughs> Morris, again. Does that mean Linus that Linus... Said... <laughs> go ahead. Linus said someone else found me and he doesn't know how much money they took because they ran away before he could get me. <laughs> well, surprise, they didn't take any. We still have one gold. Jared, yesterday as I was trying to fish for uh, wood, I got a decorative trash can. Wow. I I'm, think I'm going to put it in my house in front of my bed to indicate <laughs> that sleeping is garbage. <laughs> yes, sleeping is garbage. And that isn't just a personal opinion. That's the official position of this, of this stream. <laughs> You know those disclaimers they have in films where they show like cast interviews and they're like, such and such does not constitute the position of a Paramount mm -hmm. film company. Well, in this case, for our stream, it's the opposite. <laughs> the views expressed herein are the views expressed herein. <laughs> okay, well... It's pretty self-explanatory when you say it like that. <laughs> try try making it a little bit more legalese and, uh, you know, obfuscated. I'm, I'm far too sleep deprived for obfuscating anything deliberately. Only accidental obfuscation here. Okay, fine. I have a question, chat. Why does this circular fountain have a square shadow? This game is unplayable. Mm. <laughs> um, do you think I should try to sell some stuff to Willie and see if it's enough to buy a... I just fished a present out of the pond. I did not oh, know this was possible. That's what happened to me when I got my decorative trash oh, can. So. Look at that. Me too. Decorative trash can? Yep. Nice. There it is. Okay, Babarma, I keep looking at your chat about uh, 1984 and Animal Farm, and it reminded me of an awesome podcast that I know I've talked about, but I just need to plug it again. It's called Strong Songs. Nope, not Strong Songs. That's not the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> That's another we separate have plugged good podcast. That. We have plugged that. What am I thinking of? Dang it. Book cheat. Book cheat. It's by an Australian comedian, and the tagline is, I've read the book, so you don't have to. So he'll just, like, read a classic every couple of weeks, and then there's, like, a little book report on it. And he'll bring other comedians on and, like, recite the book, not recite the book to them, give his summary to them, and they'll all make fun of it together. Uh, it's, it's very educational. It's been a great way to, like, get the gist of books that I don't have time to read or remember ones that I read in high school, uh, and very, very funny. That was book, book cheat. cheat. Book cheat, yes. He's like... uh He's done Animal Farm in 1984, I believe. Okay. I I'm, I'm going to go listen to that. I'm I'm a big fan of that. It's kind of like the literary equivalent of having an attorney on retainer. They do the reading and study so you don't have to. Mhm. Mm and I'm a big fan of that. It'll make me feel rich and bougie. Then I can tell all my friends. I sold one inventory worth of fish and got almost double what we need for a chest. Excellent. Um, so I could just buy all wood and then use the other wood that we've collected to get two chests. Can okay. Can do that? Yep. Should I continue to fish for wood or should I fish for uh, fish? Seems I, like... I think fish for fish when we've got space and only fish for wood as a last resort because we... Like, if you catch a fish and sell it and then buy wood, you'll end up with more wood per minute than yeah. if you just fish for wood, I think. That's assuming that my character is mentally with it enough to understand the value of time. <laughs> <laughs> Teach a okay, man Babarma. to... Go ahead. <laughs> Babarma says, square shadow means Daleks live in the fountain. Benjamin yes. says also ChatGPT. Does ChatGPT live in the fountain? Sorry, I don't remember what also ChatGPT was about. 
probably like having a lawyer on retainer where you oh, can like, yeah, just yeah, get yeah. a summary of whatever you want. That makes sense. But Barma, I'll have a go listening to Book Cheat. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoy it. And I'm curious what ChatGPT would say about Orwell's books. I bet there's a lot of questions you could ask about Orwell's books that it would refuse to answer just because it tries to stay out of like controversial topics. Yeah, that is pretty interesting. It's fascinating to me. We've talked about this extensively on the stream before, but the 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 innate biases that AI show because the data sets they have are biased because the people collecting the data are biased or the people creating the data are biased. All of the above, yeah. Um are really fascinating to me and it's it's interesting to me as well that we've kind of We've built the bias into the AI innately, but then we've also tried to put a veneer of our own social mores onto it as well. Mm -hmm. That's just, I mean, it, of course that's inevitable. It was going to happen because we don't want people to do bad stuff using AI and preventing that or preserving shareholder value through stock prices and good um, optics is important but it's kind of ironic and funny in a weird way <laughs> maybe i'm too sleep deprived irl but i f i find that pretty funny funny that the like things we've done to correct bias are sloppy well not necessarily just like we've made this amazing tool and then we're also making it like don't be controversial don't be you know don't answer this kind of question it's just fascinating to have this thing and then to create to make it follow all the rules that we ourselves follow so that we don't like make each other mad mm. yeah. that's fascinating kind of like raising a child like part part of teaching them is teaching them and then part of teaching them is reining it in, you know, uh, getting them to do what's appropriate when it's appropriate. Yeah. That's a good one point. Of the, one of the pitfalls I think with trying to control AI is, uh, like chat GPT and like image generation and stuff like that is that the training data and the training process is so refined and nuanced and like subtle. Um, but the, like any correction we do is going to have a totally different process where we're trying to make lists of forbidden topics and like, uh, correct on things in post instead of like changing the, the algorithm itself. And so it, it always ends up feeling like using a ax to do a scalpel's job, um, always going to be pretty heavy-handed corrections which aren't perfect i'm glad people are trying to figure it out and figure out the right way to do things but we've got a long way to go i think yeah benjamin do we all follow those rules good question definitely not but it also depends a lot on the context right like <laughs> on twitch right there's certain stuff you can't say um and like some of that is for a very good reason and some of that is because people might take it the wrong way and some of that is because you just don't want to share private information, right? And an AI doesn't know that. Like people feel embarrassed or can, can tell when they've overstepped but AI really doesn't have that. It might tell you it does if you program it to, but... You know, that's not an innate part of its experience, I guess. Yeah. That, that's my thought, Brinkley. What, what would you say to that? I think part of it is that humans can, like, figure out when it's okay to break the rules and, like, when the consequences for breaking the rules are acceptable. Like, I can make a more crass joke around my parents than I would around my in-laws and an even more crass joke around Jared when we're alone. <laughs> <laughs> than it would run my parents. 
because I like I know it's acceptable to him, and I know when I can like push the boundaries with different people in different ways. With something like ChatGPT, you have to have one set of rules that applies in all contexts, which is way way harder to do. You you can't. Uh, and it's not interactive. Like the, I can learn how a specific person is going to respond to a specific type of speech and adapt over time. Or if I don't adapt, that person can choose to spend less time with me. Um, but with ChatGPT, it's like, this is the one model that we have and uh, can't can't have it context switch as much. Benjamin uh, says, I'm not suggesting that because humans do not follow those rules that AI shouldn't. Yeah, my screen like, just said you've got some new thoughts to consider. What does that mean? Ooh, that means you have hit the threshold for leveling up. That's a nice quality of life improvement. Instead of like waiting until nighttime to learn that you leveled up, it, it tells you right away. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Anyways, back to back <laughs> discussion. <laughs> That's that was like something from Disco Elysium. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Berkeley, I was, I've been thinking about this. I was talking with my family and a couple of friends about AI a few weeks ago. And there's this childhood story about these people that live around a lake. And um, there's a woodcutter that goes around the lake. And, uh, you know, one day the woodcutter shows the people that he can carve these leaves into monkeys and then tell the leaf monkeys to go do stuff and they do it. And, you know, before long, the people are asking the woodcutter to to make monkeys to, like, do important things for them. And the woodcutter does it. And then, you know, after that, then they want monkeys to do, like, kind of the inconvenient things for them. And the woodcutter does it. And, you know, gradually people just stop doing stuff themselves at all. And it's all done by these magical leaf monkeys um and they gradually fill up the area where they live with trash and then run out of leaves and that's the end but before the end they have th the woodcutter makes these little leaf carvings to carve more leaves do you see an equi if that was coherent at all do you see an equivalent future panning out with ai where we lose um like critical or common skills and then eventually those things just become lost to AI long term um, I don't know about losing things to AI long term I think there will always be people that specialize in everything like there's people today that know how to make candles and do blacksmithing without modern technology because that's interesting to them I think we'll always have stuff like that but like for the masses I think like just the ability to write an essay is going to be hugely hurt. Like I, I read stories every, almost every day of teachers who are frustrated with their students, like using AI for stuff. Um, I found people, someone took screenshots of like academic articles that they found on Google that were using chat GPT very blatantly. And it was still able to get published in like really low tier academic conferences. So not, not your nature or science magazine, but, uh, lower tier journals um yeah so i think it's already starting like if there's an easy way to do stuff lots of people are gonna take that easy way and then they'll be not as good at doing the hard way sometimes that's fine like i don't know how to drive a stick shift and that's fine um maybe in the future people won't know how to use google as we know it because there's like a better more interactive thing that they can use mm -hmm. but i i think there's also skills that are going to be really sad to lose not entirely but in part for a large part of the population yeah that's actually a really great point like the relevancy of learning how to do a boolean web search that was a huge deal in elementary school and they taught us how to do that and you know how many times i've done that you know less than 50 uh -huh. <laughs> right like i i've done i've done it but it's not something that's, um, you know, relevant in the way that databases and searches work these days. So, 
I don't really f feel like not teaching people how to do that would be like a loss to our culture. But the ability to write coherently at length is that's a fascinating one. But there's so many other things like that, like grinding my own ink, you know, that was relevant to people 500 years ago. I've never done that. In fact, I, you know, like all the pens I use come with the ink pre put in it. I don't even have to sharpen a nib or learn how to do calligraphy because paper is cheap and ink is cheap and nobody cares whether my handwriting looks like some beautiful work of art or, you know, a five-year-old's chicken scratching, ultimately. And I guess you could liken it to the relevancy of cursive, right? That, that was a big deal 50 years ago, but with the advent of typing, nobody's learning how to do that. You learn how to write basic print and you move forward with your life. And do we, do you feel like losing cursive is a blow culturally? I don't feel very strongly about cursive. Yeah. I think, uh, like the ability to write a five paragraph essay is much more important than cursive, but also might become obsolete. Yeah. I, I would argue the only real loss of losing the ability to write or, or stopping teaching, stopping to teach. How's my grammar suffering right now? Um, when you, when you don't understand cursive because you can't write it, therefore you can't read it. Um, there is a barrier, right, to looking to the past and reading firsthand documents and having that direct interaction. Now we have to trust somebody to interpret that for us, somebody who has the knowledge. And that's kind of dangerous. But how how many people is that going to be critical to? Probably not a lot. I don't know. But there it is, right? Like, what is relevant and how how is... AI going to change those relevant skills. Maybe it won't be like the end of culture, the way that we think about it or the way I think about it as much as it will just be yet another shift in an unending series of shifts. Do you think I could sell these trash cans, Berkeley? Um, maybe. I don't know who would be the best person to buy them. Okay. Um, I am thinking it's time to upgrade a backpack. Uh, do you mind if I sell all the fish that I have in my inventory and see if that's enough? Go for it. And also, I just realized I've been continuing to fish the fountain uh, oh. foolishly. I did some regular fishing yesterday, but I think I just got talking and zoned out, man. <laughs> Oops. Um, okay, the, I made almost half enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think we're going to lose some money tonight unless we have anything we want to buy. Oh, I could try to buy a chicken. Let's see how much those are. Yeah. That, that would be good. Have you been collecting the eggs? I have not been. Yeah, they just barely got old enough to lay the eggs. So we've got two eggs so far. Okay. Okay. I could also fish some and try to sell direct to Willie or, or one of the other shopkeepers. Um, a chicken is 800. I think that's going to be a good okay. investment. Does that sound good? Yep. The suggested name is Snepio, and I love it. <laughs> yes. 10 out of 10. Oh, I wonder what the name of the first two. Uh, I will go check. That should be possible from the pause menu, right? Yeah. Oh, I th yeah, I think that's a new thing. You can see all your animals. Twig Wait. and Petal. Yeah. Snepio is the superior name of out of it's, those. It's way better than Twig and Petal, yeah. <laughs> Either that or Snepio is a part of a plant that I'm not aware of yet. All right, we're 45 minutes into the stream. Uh, how are people feeling? Do you have an opinion on uh, if we 
do half this farm, half the other farm, versus all the other farm. I think those are pretty much our options. Whoa, I just caught a river jelly. I am pretty sure I've never caught one of those. That sounds like it is new. Also, the ocean jelly that you caught, I can't sell to Willy. It's not a normal fish. And I think it gives you a bonus if you eat it. So that's cool. Okay. I have touched jellyfish, like, on the beach. It's not something I would want to put in my mouth. <laughs> Well, you're going to have to do it, Jared. Oh, man. That's the rules. Okay. Babarmas well. says our chicken is named after Italian Snoopy. <laughs> Snippio. Snippio. Sounds like a generic Shakespeare character as well. What is, uh, what's the Italian equivalent of Charlie? Carlito Brown. Oh, yeah. Like a hard C at the beginning makes sense. Um, but Barman also says mix old farm and new farm. Okay. Yes, that is what I would also love to do. How are we feel, dude? Are we okay with a JoJo run on this? JoJo is traditionally the evil option. So if if you're not familiar, typical way to play this game is you donate enough items to the community center to like rebuild it, and then everyone's happy and comes and hangs out at the community center. It's just like a good thing for the social life of pelican town the alternative is you buy a membership at your local fantasy walmart and or Am amazon i think it's more amazon uh your local fantasy whole foods and uh it just like replaces the community center so traditionally seen as the evil run but with the new 1.6 update i think that'll get us closer to perfection if we do it that way but Barmy says it's basically the Walmart version. Yep. How do you feel, Jared? If we keep going on this farm, do you want to do Joja or Community Center? I I want to experience what Joja is like. We've already done the good thing for the community in that other parallel world. In this world, our farm is called Suffering Farm. We don't sleep. We don't use tools. And we also don't play ball with the community. So I think we just got to commit to the whole suffering. Suffering's for everybody now. I wonder if we can find like a visual mod that just makes everything a little gray and sad. <laughs> you probably could make oh. one. 1920s yeah. London veneer over everything. Put some coal smoke and some tuberculosis in the air. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I gotta ask, I, I never thought about this until right now, but the dystopian, like, suffering of the past, uh... We're definitely overfishing this area, right? I don't <laughs> I don't think this is a large enough body of water to support even two people fishing around the clock like this. Plus what whatever Willie's doing. Yeah. I so I'm fishing in the ocean, which is a limitless supply of resources if everything I've learned from life is true. Oh no. Zero environmental impact from anything you can do in the ocean. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But Barma says the town government has to put all Joja employees on food stamps because they don't make a living wage. Oof, too real. Close to home. Uh, and true, I think. There's a few references to the wages people make. I think Shane and maybe Sam talk about their wages. At one point, um, Morris offers to buy out Pierre's store and pay him a wage of like 
five gold per day or something like that. It's yeah. Jojo's wages are pitiful. I guess in that scenario, like we're kind of the government paying the food stamps by uh, helping everyone out and rebuilding their community center. Yeah. Who buys our stuff though? Like when we put it in that produce cart thing? I think that's Mayor Lewis. So he just is Daddy Warbucks to the whole town? Mm hmm. I guess so. Dang, man. He could have at least had like a better personality. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can't buy that though. Okay, I forgot to mention, this morning in-game when I woke up, um, I had another letter from Harvey saying that because I had no money, he treated me for free. But this time, I, we, we did have four gold in our pockets when he said I had no money. So I'm curious what the threshold is where they start taking a cut. Yeah, well, you've heard that economists... Oh, no, the, mo the monsters are out on the farm. Um mm. If you see $20 on the street, it's not worth stopping to pick it up because if it was, somebody else would have already done it. Um, maybe that applies here and like, <laughs> I don't know if you're, if you're poor enough that you're working until you pass out, then <laughs> probably nothing worth stealing. Yeah. Maybe we can just pass out with zero gold enough times that they'll stop checking and then we can start, you know, raking in the money like normal. Yeah. So there was a, uh, this is a bit of a tangent, but there's a game called Animal Crossing that's kind of like Sturdy Valley, um, one of the predecessors, but with less of the farm focus and more of the town focus and like socializing focus um, and community center stuff. And... They had a feature where if you turned your game off without saving, this really angry character would come shout at you. And it would be like, this is an exaggeration, but like a 20 minute cutscene of this dude shouting at you that you turned your game off without saving it. And I'm just waiting for something like that to happen here. You know, that's hilarious. Like, why aren't you sleeping in your bed? You're ruining the game. So far, none of our items have been taken, which surprises me because in previous saves, when you pass out, you can lose important stuff from that, your inventory. I think that's just if you pass out in the mines or if monsters deplete your health. All oh, zero. okay. But I think it's mine specific. All right, well, I've run myself to exhaustion. I'm going to go stand in the dirt patch until, <laughs> until I pass out. <laughs> oh, suffering yeah. farm. We love it. Love it. So on a normal playthrough, one of the big consequences of not sleeping is that the next day you wake up with less energy. But since we're also doing no tools, we already like hardly ever run out of energy. So that's interesting that those two effects kind of like negate each other a bit. Yeah, that makes me very curious about what's going to happen to me then. After I pass out here, maybe I'll be. Oh, you really got down to like no energy. Huh? Yeah, I was fishing a lot today. Crazy. Yeah, it doesn't like decrease your energy from the day before. It just doesn't fill up as far. I think okay. if you go to bed before midnight, it goes all the way. And then maybe if you go to bed at two, it's like halfway or something. And then it linearly interpolates between those two. There's a vocab word for the day. Fancy way of saying it splits the difference. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, cutscene. Oh, we get our, we get our pet. Speaking of, Berkeley, do you want to tell them about the, the new pets? 
Oh, yes. This is a 1.6 thing. So if you get full hearts with your pet, you can get a second pet. And I think there might not be a limit to that. I think you can just keep getting pets. And also, in addition to cats and dogs, there's now turtles as pets. I'm super excited for that. Our cat will be called Chief Suffer. Um, are the turtles snapping turtles? Like, could they fight monsters for us? Because that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. I kind of doubt it, but uh, you never know. It looks like we did lose about 100 gold last night. Maybe 200. I didn't keep close track. Um... Who who rescued you? Linus. Yep. Same. So he didn't tell us the bill. He just said someone else ran off with our money before he found us. And I trust him, you know? If anyone else in this town could tell me that, and I'd be like, okay, you took my money. With Linus, I, I believe it. Yep, Linus is the most trustworthy of all. Have we talked about the fan theory that he founded Jojo Mart and then feels bad about it and that's why he lives his life as a hermit? I I vaguely remember that. Oh no, Mayor Lewis cutscene. Alright. You know, cry me to me that you that misappropriated usually... town funds and it led to the dis decay of your infrastructure. <laughs> this is your fault, Mayor Lewis. You did this. You and your green shirt and your mustard yellow tie. Speaking of infrastructure decay, uh, or maybe something a little more rapid like disassembly, did you guys see the video of that container ship hitting that bridge this morning? I didn't uh, watch the video, but I read the article, so that's crazy. It's nuts. Like, for one thing, seeing a bridge just completely trashed like that is rare. But on the video, it happens very quickly, which I didn't expect that to be the... I don't know why I thought it would take some time for it to fall over, but nope. It just collapses like it was demolished, which I guess it was demolished. So, fair. I don't want to go inside with you, Mary Lewis. The state that it's in implies that there was at one point lots of stuff in here. Like that giant safe. You can't tell me that the huge steel door to that safe got blown off by accident. <laughs> it just that's just what Rust does to to uh the safes. I don't Benjamin know about says that. the video was Benjamin says the video is nuts. Apparently the ship lost power, which obviously contributed to it running straight into the bridge. Okay, I was curious about like how that could happen. But losing power does make sense. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to me that the 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 loss of power it seemed like it happened pretty fast relative to them colliding so why were they on that course to begin with very interesting how they ended up in that position i mean it was over a river right like is it possible they lost power in a time where they would normally be like breaking by going against the tide like would the tide have been bringing them faster than they wanted to go yeah that's possible I've definitely experienced that in a kayak. I don't know what their situation is, but that would make sense. You can definitely imagine scenarios where losing power would make you speed up instead of slowing down.
Don't worry about my hallucinations, Mary Lewis. It's because I haven't slept in six days. <laughs> and counting. What happens to the little creatures if you don't rebuild the community center? Do they just go away? Oh, that question is off limits. If we want to do a Jojo run, we cannot think about the Junimos. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think they go away. They probably go back to their spirit realm. All right. Or the Feywild or whatever. If they're fey creatures, I don't feel so bad about that. Those those fey creatures always have something nasty up their sleeve. These ones sure do love their deals. I was looking for a bargain. Junimo is this universe's uh, demonic <laughs> faction confirmed 2024. Oh, I don't think deals needs to be <laughs> demonic. That's like that could Look, be a man. thing. My entire worldview is based on the devil went down to Georgia. Everything has fit <laughs> into that paradigm. <laughs> okay, I think... Um... Oh, we probably won't have time for it another day i think next time we play on this world we will have enough to enough stuff to sell to get us to the backpack level excellent benjamin says i know close to nothing about but oh sorry i'm catching a fish i will read your post in a second <laughs> bad timing okay caught my fish I know close to nothing about boats the tweet i saw said that the generator kicked on which allowed them to drop the anchor Oh, interesting. You can't even drop the anchor without power. After dropping the anchor in a panic, it hard pulled them directly into the support beam unintentionally. Oh. Okay. Yikes, yeah. Boats are complicated, huh? It's a lot of forces moving in a lot of directions. And the anchor kind of like turns you into a sideways pendulum. Yeah. that's It's fascinating. It's like being at the end of like a little whip being whipped around yeah except in this case it's a big steel whip one time when i was like eight i had just learned how to tie like lassos with a rope kind of um and so i was just tying lassos around everything <laughs> in our house <laughs> uh, and at one point i put and I made a rope and put a lasso shape on both ends I put one end around my ankle and the other around the couch leg and then I jumped off the couch as far as I could just to see what would happen <laughs> and what happened is it swung me face first into the ground and I got a nosebleed from it um, which I, I imagine is similar forces of physics that were going on with the boat after it dropped the anchor. Um, not to make light of it, that, that was a tragic event. Could but... you imagine, though, doing that and then your whole couch disassembles itself? <laughs> or the floor. Or the floor. Yeah, the floor yeah. would be the boat, or it would be the bridge in that scenario. Yeah. Dang. Look at you as a child following the scientific method. Well, I didn't write anything down, so it was just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very thin threshold between science and everything else. We got two geodes from a chest. Nice. Are we, are we trying to build out the museum? I've got a topaz right now that I could go donate, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess we could. Okay. Well, I'll just put it in the chest because it's probably closed at this point, but hmm. next time. Yeah, I think there's some rewards that are worth it. I wonder if I can still get a crystallarium without doing the uh, community center, because that 
Crystallarium was clutch. One small gripe I have with this game is that you can't pursue both paths and then pick one at the end the way that you can with a lot of RPGs. It's like as soon as you start the community center, I'm pretty sure you're locked out of Joja. And as soon as you start Joja, I know you're locked out of the community center. Um, too bad they don't let you like pick rewards from both. Yeah, that would be useful to be able to, yeah, like in Skyrim, you can kind of go back and forth that way, mm -hmm. but not here. I wonder how many people have had to restart the game because they didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, luckily this one's kind of a small cost of restarting. Pretty common to do lots and lots of farms if you're into this game. Doesn't take a ton of hours to make a decent amount of progress. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we've already got a whopping 368 gold, so... Have we ever worked ourselves to exhaustion on the stream? I kind of doubt it. I don't... It's so hard to when you're not using tools. All right. Well, this might I be the gonna... first time. I'm just about there. I'm curious what will happen. Okay. I'm actually pretty close as well. Not as close as you are. In uh, Harvest Moon, kind of the inspiration for this game, when you get to a certain level of exhaustion, the music starts to go all weird and the visuals get warped and stuff. Mm. Okay, so it just won't let me fish anymore and I can't run. That is not too bad of consequence. Consequences go. Yeah, I already can't run in real life, and I'm also not legally allowed to fish anymore because I don't have a permit, so. There we go. Okay, I'm on my way up to the passing out spot. With my pockets full of fish. <laughs> It's a gross image. Slimy I'm fish st pocket. Yeah, it is a gross image. Uh, I've got to say, I'm so happy with how sleepy our avatars turned out. <laughs> <laughs> if you would ask me this morning, how sleepy could you make a Stardew Valley character look with just the defaults? I would say probably a little sleepy, but these guys look so sleepy. They really do. Yeah. That shirt is a really good choice, too. Thanks. I'm glad I found it. I had a slightly worse one, and then I decided to keep looking, and there it was. Berkeley, on my controller, the button I press to fish and the symbol it shows when I press it and can't are the same. It's an X. That's not intentional, oh, but it's just silly coincidence. Yeah, that's interesting. I finally got a controller. Maybe I should try it on this game. I've mostly been using it for uh, a game called Ori and the Will of the Wisps and also the Miles Morales game. It's been really good on controller, but I should try this one. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's anything special. I just like the, the ergonomics are a little better. 
We lost about 60 gold that time. I got build 36 by Harvey. Okay. That's probably right around 10% of what you had, I think. Yep. Um, they One of the changes in 1.6 is they raised the amount of gold that you can lose if you're, like, stupid rich. You can lose up to, like, 15,000 now, I think, in a night. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming out and looking at the new update and some of the features with us. We're going to keep suffering, and we're also going to keep doing our regular anti-tools shenanigans with our main save. Um, if you enjoyed this and you're watching it live, check out the About page in our Twitch channel and use it to join our Instagram or our Discord where we talk about stuff. Um, I recently <laughs> did a write-up on a great hip-hop track I'm a big fan of uh, on our Discord, so you can go read slash listen to that over there. And then if you're watching this on YouTube, same links, but in the description of the video. Anything else, Berkeley? Um... Let us know on Discord if you like this and if you want to see more of our no sleep, no tools challenge. <laughs> or if you want us to just stick with plain old no tools. And I think that's it. Thanks, awesome. everyone. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.